Um, this meeting has been posted in various locations throughout the city. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, take the prerogative, if it's all right with my fellow councilmen, uh, to move number four and first, because it's going to be very, very short, and we might spend more time on number three, if that's all right. That is okay. Okay. So then we'll move to the second item on our agenda, which is down as number four, bill number 2008-27, annexation number ANX 27240, property location on the east side of Oso Blanco Road, approximately 875 feet north of the Kyle Canyon Road alignment. Petition by Carolyn Lee Ahern Trust, acreage 2.28 acres, zoned H2 County, UPCD city equivalent, sponsored by Councilman Stephen Ross. And we will have the uh, brilliant Margo Wheeler. <laughs> Thank you, Margo Wheeler, Planning information. and Development. Um, this application is for annexation. It will be brought in as um, U zoning PCD general plan designation. While the applicant gives preliminary indication that they hope to have a commercial development here, that will require a subsequent general plan amendment and rezoning and all other applications. So at this time, staff can recommend this annexation. Is there anybody else from staff who wishes to speak? Anybody else in the audience who would like to make a comment? Any questions or a motion from? Motion for due pass. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Okay. Then we'll move on to our next item. <laughs> Advance item, Bill Number 2008-17, establishes new regulations for cable television operators and other video services providers, consistent with NRS Chapter 711, as amended, proposed by the also brilliant Mark Vincent, Director of Finance and Business. Equally brilliant. Our Mark, Mark Vincent, Finance and Business Services, for the record. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, just a quick little background. Um, again, uh, the last session, AB 526 changed the law that uh, enabled uh, video service providers to get relief from their existing local franchises by petitioning or getting a flat franchise with the state of Nevada. We, um, in response to that, would be required to amend our, uh, our ordinance so that we could, would be allowed to continue to collect the 5% um, license fee, if you will, or franchise fee. Um, and we proposed that, uh, that ordinance a little while ago. We had some concerns were raised by both Embark and Cox. Uh, VSPs, um, and we've been working diligently with them for the last few months to try to make some corrections to some of the language to their satisfaction, and I think we're there today. Uh, we have representatives from both Cox and Embark here who may or may not want to speak. I thought it would be helpful if I just went over some of the, the highlights of the changes that we've made real quickly. <clears throat> we made some changes um, concerning uh, reference to a section on PEG channels that no longer exist. That was in Section now 2. Should we look at a clean copy? You can if you'd like. Or is showing the changes going to be the better uh, one? I'm looking at, uh, I don't know which one you are looking at. I printed out my own, so I, I've got you at a little bit of a disadvantage. My changes are uh, st stricken out and, and italicized. So we'll find out, I guess, when you start with the first one, and then we'll see if you okay. have the right one. Section two. Well, for example, in Section 2, if you're looking at the same one I have, you'll see the reference to Section, um, in the th third line in on Section 2, it says uh, to consist of the provision set forth below as sections 3, 2, and it used to say 26 is stricken out to so replace with 25. Is that how yours is looking? Have the old That's what the clean copy says. That's okay. here okay. in front of us into the white. We have the old one in the back. Um, additionally, in Section 8B, there were some uh, language changes and for the reference well, to the well, public. For, for the record. Mm -hmm. The reason for the strike of 26 and replace it with 25. There was there was a reference to peg channels that was changed, um, and so that reference was no longer valid. Thank you. Then in section eight, um, there was a section that originally said that uh, um, 
that all other information of this section shall be subject to the public inspection and copying under Nevada Public Records Law, NRS Chapter 329, as amended. That was changed to read, if required by the Nevada Public Records Law, NRS 239. It's essentially still the same requirement, just worded a little differently. <coughs> Um, in Section 9A, there was a lot of discussion that we had about the requirement for a video service provider or VSP to, to have a business license. We are keeping that requirement, although the, uh, we don't think it's burdensome, but the, the, the VSP will be required of a business license, and that fee will be the 5% franchise fee that, that the, this ordinance is enacting. Um, Section 9C. Um, we added a clause at the end of that <coughs> to... Um, Clarify that information service uh, services are uh, provided by VS VSPs would be um, uh, exempt, which was again stating the obvious for us. Section it was not a significant change. Section 11A, uh, we had language um, concerning limitations in the audit. This the uh, yeah, AB 526 had some language that uh, limited the audit um, abilities and time particularly time frames, and so we added that language to our, our ordinance as well. We had some discussion about the ADA requirements. Um, uh, our last franchise, uh, the most recent franchise that we had was with AT&T. We had ADA requirements in there, and we're going to leave those in. And what section was that? 13, sorry. So there was no change to 13, although we had some discussion about it. In Section 14, uh, we had some discussion there. We did add some clarifying language on Section 14C. Um, the issue here is one of the one of the requirements of AB 526 was that any any uh, fees or permit fees that we would charge for access into the right of way uh, would be would not exceed the cost that the city is incurring to process those those requests. And so basically the language that we have added here is that the amount of any permit fee should not exceed the actual cost incurred by the city in administering the, proce uh, the process of issuing such permits and performing such inspections. Uh, right now our fee structure we believe is considerably less than our cost, um, so we don't think that's an issue, but that was a discussion that we had with the VSPs as to they wanted to make sure that the fee would never be more than what our actual cost to administer those permits would be. So that's why that language was added. Um, in Section 16A, um, we deleted a section that said including but not limited to all standards specified in Title 13 of this code. It was a little probably uh, redundant. Uh, there were also some additional um, language clarifications in 16 regarding the rights of way uh, under 16A3, 16A7. We uh, changed some language instead of saying uh, uh, where, whenever possible, the language now reads whenever it is commercially reasonable to do so. And 16C, we extended the time that VS VSP had to remove surplus material. Excuse less me, what was that last one? What section? 16A7. A7? Yes. It originally, it originally yeah. said whenever possible, the VSP shall use trenchless technology, and it was changed to say whenever it is commercially reasonable to do so. It may not always, always be commercially reasonable to expect them to do that. <laughs> That's a tough one sometimes to know what is commercially reasonable or not. I'm not a lawyer, but I think that's um, a lawyer pretty term? standard terminology for lawyers. If Al was a lawyer, he would probably respond to that. Right. I have nothing to say. Yeah. I guess he's not a lawyer then. Okay. Um, again, in uh, 16C, uh, we extended the period of time unless uh, the, the material was blocking uh, a public street or sidewalk. Then they would have to remove it within 24 hours. Other than that, they would have 72 hours. Uh, we had some discussion about um, landscaping under 17C3. Um, I know there was some concern that we wouldn't be asking uh, the VSP to relocate facilities 
for frivolous landscaping, but we did want to have the right to be able to um, ask them to relocate uh, facilities if we were doing a street uh, renovation that included uh, significant landscaping. So that, that pretty much stayed as is. And then finally, there's just a few more significant changes, I suppose, in Section 21. In Section 21, in the first part, we added um, the phrase that will result in disruption of such yards or result in the installation of new exposed surface facilities, just to be a little clearer. And uh, we changed the language with, with, with regard to propose to commence construction to propose to commence the proposed project. In section 22, we added section B, which was again to add some clarification um, that um, that if a VSP has a letter of credit or performance bond or cash deposit of 100,000 or more in connection with its use of uh, the city's rights of way or, or for other purposes, that that would uh, comply with this re bonding requirement. And then section 25, which is the deletion, I believe, of the reference to the peg channel <coughs> that I previously mentioned. So the I think only concern I have is with the six, in, I mean, from what you said. Did you want to go over something else? No, I'm, I'm, I'm done. That was the 21. That two days prior to the date is not much notification, I think. And that's my feeling. Before something that would result in disruption of the residential yards, uh, facilities shall give written notification to residents at least two days prior to the date on which the proposal commences. Why did, why did you pick two? I think because you could be gone for two days yeah. and not know then. And, and that's what the citizens object to so often, is the notification. Um, I do have representative from Public Works. I don't know if the two days is fairly standard for most of the other right-of-way work that's done by other other entities or not. Just as a clarification real quickly, Mark, I'm sorry. Chris, identif identify yourself. This is Chris Ware from Business Services. Just as a clarification, uh, I, I guess I'm the guilty party. This was actually a section that was copied out of our existing cable ordinance. So I can't say I personally gave it a lot of thought. It's been on the book since 1998, and I copied the 48 hours. Having said that, I understand your concern, and perhaps public works should weigh in on whether 48 hours is a reasonable period of time, or maybe the Cox or Embark may also have thoughts on that. Would it cause a problem for Cox to have a few more days? It's just so citizens will be aware. Steve Shore, Vice President of Cox Communications. Uh, we do not see any problem with what is currently there. We do not have any issues uh, with residents, to our knowledge. Uh, 48 hours is, is, I believe, substantial. I think anything more than that would create for us uh, somewhat of a hardship because then now you're sitting and waiting for 72 or, or more hours. And again, we do this on a, on a daily basis, and we've not seen that 48 hours is, is any problem whatsoever. We don't, we've not, I cannot even remember the last time we've ever had a complaint issued uh, in the 48 hour notice. What are your projects then? Maybe, it's the, uh, maybe I'm thinking of other kinds of projects because I get calls to my office all the time from utilities and things with projects if they feel they haven't had appropriate notifications. So. I mean, what kind of projects are you thinking of? When you say disrupt backyards, what does that mean? In a backyard basis, it would be probably a pole attachment more than anything. And that is, if a pole line uh, gets damaged or is harmed in some way, we would have to necessarily go back and do that in an emergency basis. 
we would we would do customary notification, but we would go back within the same day. So that, that's typically what's in the backyards and the front yards. Again, it, it would, for the most part, it's new construction. Uh, if it's existing construction, that means something within the front yard has been damaged that we're just going in and repairing. And, and under both the NRS and federal law, we are required uh, to be able to restore it to the condition that we found anyway. So once the residents see that within the uh, – normally it's a, um, it's a door hanger that we leave on the residents, and normally they see that they're, they're not as worried as they are anything else. Because that's that's actually stated within the door hanger that we're going to be there. It says on there that we have to. Well, when you when you talk about disruption, there you're not talking about something that might dig into the yard. You're talking about something on a pole, or you're talking. About or it could be a dig into the yard. And again, it's been there since 1998, and I I do not remember the last time we've had any complaint regarding this issue at all. And and I monitor every single um, uh, complaint or um, um, call that comes in regarding these and uh, and that's just not ever been an issue because it has been 48 hours and I've been with the company way before 1998 and I, I can't even remember one. Madam Chairman, uh, Mark Vincent, I did check with Mr. Moyer from the Public Works Department and he's indicated that the 48 hours is a pretty standard notice requirement for other utilities as well, so it's, it's nothing unusual okay. for what that's worth. It's worth a lot. Councilwoman, uh, I just wanted to point out that that our authority to regulate is going to be limited to the right-of-way, so what we're talking about in this ordinance are public right-of-way excavations where there's a budding residential lots, but we're not talking about what happens in the well, lots. We can't do okay. that. I see. So we're okay. just talking about when, when Cox or when Bart needs to go in, dig, you know, something wrong in the right of way in the sidewalk or in the right of way. That's that's all it's talking about. It's not talking about a, a whole street. <coughs> probably. It's probably a, a very limited situation. It's on our right of ways that we're talking about doing it. So yes. we're not when it says it see it didn't say right of ways, it said disruption to the yard. Well so. it says Earlier on. Let, me, let me indicate what it says because I think we were careful about what we said. The, uh, the language talks about. Oh, I see this one here on section 21. It says, right to the longer residential yeah. yards are located. So the work, uh, the predicate is it's right of way, but it, the, the, the qualifier is right of way where residential lots are. But we're talking right. about right of way. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So staff uh, recommends approval of the ordinance as amended. Make sure there are any other questions. I have no more questions. Do you, Councilman? No, Madam Chairwoman. Would you like to make a motion, Mr. Councilman? Yes, I would like to move. Do you want to see if, uh, anybody else? Uh, wants Is there anybody to else who would like to make a comment besides Mr. Thor? Or do you have another comment? I, I do. Uh, Steve Shore, Vice President Cox Communications. I do have one other comment. Um, you'll remember as this, um, this astute uh, committee um, first met, we raised some questions uh, that we had at the time. And, and I'm really coming forward to, um, uh, to compliment uh, the city of Las Vegas, number one, in its reasonability in, in, in listening to uh, the providers such as myself at Embark. And number two, the expertise that Mr. Bettis brought forward uh, in his willingness to sit and discuss with the attorneys for both Embark and Cox Communications the issues that were raised. And, and third, um, both Mr. Vincent and, and Mr. Bettis's uh, agreeability uh, to put forth a document which I believe that, that we as a company can agree with and, uh, and can move forward uh, with to the benefit of the, of the city. And, uh, and I just want to thank those individuals for the work that they did. Thank you very much. I'm really proud of our, our workers. We appreciate that. Rob McCoy, for the record, representing Embark. I concur with everything that uh, Steve just said. With one addition, we're going to miss Larry. And uh, 
But anyway, great work. We appreciate the city's openness and help. Thank you very much, and we're in full support of the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Was there anybody else who wanted to say anything? Then I turn again to the councilman. Yes, I'd move for due pass with all amendments to the ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion passes. And now is the time for public participation. If there's anybody in the audience who wants to comment on anything else. If not, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I should have caught that. What's up? I was reading it. I hope I did not better. Feeling better. I guess I. How's your wife doing? I guess I'll take my meds. <laughs> no, no, because uh, it's good that you did that. Okay. Sometimes we get so much of this. Uh, uh, you could just sit in my desk. I was going to cheat the gun through a lot. Oh, I don't know. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to try to take care of you. I'm going to try to take care of you. I'm going to clarify it for them. Yeah. Uh, you retiring there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Going with, with, with the crowd. Oh, going with the crowd, yeah. I would, I would love it. Uh, uh, you, you, play golf again. Again. Hey, you don't want to play with Pete. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, why are you leaving us? Well, I had about 39 years. And That's not enough. He's, not going, enough man. he's jumping to direct TV. That was good. You know, you're just bad. You know that. He's incorrigible. Um... So, yeah, I'll, I'll be seeing you around. Okay. I'll check you out. Good. Anything I can do, just let me know. Okay. Okay? Okay.